Hey, and welcome to our first video in our series on trigonometry for electricians. Now, trigonometry is a very important concept when we're dealing with electrical theory. So much is based off of the right triangle, which we'll get into in other videos. But it's important for us to have the foundations of trig. Now, the beginnings of it are we're going to start with is Pythagoras' theorem, which if you remember from geometry in high school, is just a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Now, the c squared is your hypotenuse side, which is going to be your longest side. And generally what we're trying to do is figure out what the size of a side is, not the square of the size of a side. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of this square. In order to do that, I have to square root the c squared and to get the square out. Once I do something to one side of the formula, I gots to do it to the other side. So it ends up being c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Let's see how that looks in a formula. See what I mean here? I've got c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now let's throw this at a triangle and see practically how this will play out, trying to determine the sizes of the sides, whether they be a and b or the hypotenuse c. Now here I've got us a right triangle. We know it's a right triangle because I've got this square box here that tells me that that's 90 degrees, which also tells me that these other two angles have to add up to 90 degrees because we know that all three angles in a triangle have to equal 180 degrees. We also have A side and B side here, which will be given proper names in our next video, but right now we'll just call them A and B. And the important side here is this C side. That is our longest side, AKA the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse will always be the longest side of a right triangle. So if you calculate something and it works out to be smaller than A or B, you've done something wrong. And we also know that because it is opposite the 90 degree angle. So it will always be the longest side. So let's throw some values at this. A and B have given the values of four and five. We're trying to determine what C is here. Now using Pythagoras' theorem, we know that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So we know that the formula is going to be four squared plus five squared is equal to C squared. So now that we've determined that C squared is equal to four squared plus five squared. Let's get rid of these four squareds and five squareds. We know that four squared, which is four times four, is equal to 16, plus five times five, which is equal to 25. C squared is equal to 16 plus 25. Now that I've determined that C squared is equal to 16 plus 25, why don't we just add 16 and 25 together and be done with it? So C squared is equal to 41. Now that I've determined that C squared is equal to 41, I'm not looking for C squared, I'm looking for C. So we need to get rid of this square somehow. And like I said before, we have to square root this side to get rid of the square. And whatever we do to this side, we have to do to this side. So C is equal to the square root of 41. So go ahead and punch that in your calculator. C is equal to the square root of 41. And you're gonna work out that C is equal to 6.4. So congratulations, you've just solved for the hypotenuse, which is this C, and so let's get rid of C and throw the answer in there. So there we go, now we've determined that four squared plus five squared is equal to 6.4 squared. Now what do we do though if we have a hypotenuse side in one of these sides and need to determine this side? As we did before, let's throw some numbers at it. I've got the hypotenuse is 450, and the B side or the A side is 225, sorry, the A side, and now we want to determine what the B is. So what we're going to do is let's plug into the formula what we know. We know that the formula is A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So let's throw that in there. We know that 450 squared is equal to 225 squared plus B squared. Let's throw that into our formula. Okay, so that we've got that. 225 squared plus B squared is equal to 450 squared. Now we need to get B alone. So what we have to do is we have to subtract this 225 squared out of there. Now even before we do that, let's get rid of these squares. Let's figure out what 225 squared is and what 450 squared is and deal with those numbers first. So we see that 225 squared actually works out to be 50,625. That's a big number plus b squared is equal to 202,500. Now we need to get b alone because we need to figure out what the b is, right? We're trying to figure that out. 
we can uh, get rid of this 50,625 by subtracting it out of this side. See this plus here? That means that we have to subtract this to get rid of it. As with any equation, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. So b squared is going to equal 202,500 minus 50,625. So all we've done is we've moved the equation around here. So we have b squared is equal to 202,500 minus 50,625, which works out to be 151,875. So we're getting closer to our answer. b squared is equal to 151,875. As before, we need to get rid of the square. That doesn't do us any good. Let's square root the b squared and then let's square root 151,875 and get our answer because it's going to be b is equal to the square root of 151,875. So we're starting to see the answer get closer and closer here. b is equal to the square root of 151,875. Punch that into your calculator and we get our answer of 389.0. So we have determined that 450 squared minus 225 squared gives us 389.7 squared. That is determined the size of B. And that basically completes our walkthrough of Pythagoras' theorem. It doesn't matter if you have this side and this side, you can go A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Or if you have this side, you're just going C squared minus this side is equal to this squared or c squared minus this squared is equal to this squared. It's not too shabby at all. It's not too hard to walk through. This should just be a review from grade 12, or not even grade 12, probably grade 10 geometry. In our next video, we're going to start getting into some more trig functions, talking about the ratios of sides and starting getting into sine, cosine, and tangent.